Hello, my loves. This is Daniel Mercurio. We are on the flip side of a really powerful lunar eclipse. It happened on 5-5 if you're listening in real time. If you're listening to this very far in the future, don't worry about it. But what I do want you to worry about is what this evoked from me to share with you as a result of this eclipse. Essentially, when eclipses happen, especially when they're really powerful and loaded, they are three times as powerful as a full moon, and they have the ability to alter our timelines. And one of the strongest components that came through from this past eclipse, and this is why you can listen to this anytime, because it has effect in our lives for a very long period because of it, is this notion of harnessing and utilizing our intuition as our most powerful resource and starting to forego the past and the things that we learned because of our environment, because of our upbringing, because of what we thought we should do as indisposable. Is that the right way to say it? No, disposable. As invaluable. As lacking longevity. As not allowing you to embody your truth. And so from this point on, And what this episode entails for you is about stepping into your intuition in a way that it becomes your ultimate and most powerful resource and currency in this life. Okay, let's first of all talk about intuition. Now, here's the thing. We were all born with intuition. There are so many things we were born with. Intuition, confidence, discernment, an ability to be adaptable. However, a lot of these things that we came here with, with that knowing of, yes, I want to be here on this earth. Yes, I want to live out this life. Yes, I want to fulfill my soul contract. Yes, I want to evolve. All those things you, your soul, was confidently aware of and with really big excitement and a little bit of discernment was ready for it, said yes. Here's the thing. When we drop into this earth, it is a choice, okay? We weren't forced here. It was, for many of us, recommended that we come. I believe that every lifetime is an opportunity to move deeper into our soul evolution. And so there will be a point when you're kind of chilling up in the cosmos in between lives where higher counsel, your guys will come to you and be like, Hey, it's kind of time for you to go back down. And that's an exciting thing. When you get that knock up in the cosmos, you might be thinking in this reality that you're currently living in an earth known as a 3d, you might be like, Ooh, why did I say yes? But You have to realize when you are free from this earth, when you are free from these conditions, when you are free from, you know, the societal implantation and you're just chilling up in the cosmos and you're having this beautiful in-between life, you're not attached to any judgment. You're not attached to any pain. You're not really attached to anything. You're just open and in bliss. And when you get that knock that, Hey, you've been chosen to come down and do some work. You're like, yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. So it is a choice, but it's more often than not a really exciting, willing choice that you made to be here. Okay. However, once we take that first breath and we are influenced by however the conditions were that brought us into the world, conditions that we agreed to, things get a little bit wonky. Things get a little bit confusing. And some of the things that we came here with naturally equipped become a little bit leaky, become a little bit stale, become a little bit worn and tarnished. And so the goal in awakening, the opportunity is to take those tools that we came here with, 
that might have been neglected and to clean them up and to polish them off and to start utilizing them. And this focuses on utilizing the intuitive tool you came here with and bridging where we are currently in our collective so that you can utilize it as a powerful resource. So as I said, we were all born with intuition. We all have it. Some of us have it a little bit stronger than others. I like to compare it to like that of an athlete, right? Some people are just born with a natural ability to be able to run or play basketball. However, even if you have that natural ability, like you're just more skilled in running or basketball, you still need a coach. You still need to practice. You still need to learn. You still need to show up for it in order to advance it forward, right? So even those that were naturally born intuitive, I don't believe we're just like, hey, like I'm a psychic now or I'm an intuitive now. Most individuals still had to go through a process of learning it, getting to know it, becoming intimate with it, myself included. And we'll talk about my intuitive journey another time. That's not what today is about. On the flip side of that, for those of us that maybe feel like, oh, I wasn't born kind of feeling like my intuition was at the forefront. Just like some of us maybe weren't born with a natural ability to run, that doesn't mean that you can't sign up for a 5K. That doesn't mean that you can't get on a treadmill and train and practice and become a runner. Doesn't mean the same thing for basketball, like that you can't learn it, show up for it, and play it, okay? Same with intuition, right? So even if you don't feel like you're a natural when it comes to your intuitive gifts, or intuition that we all have, then great. You have an opportunity to become intuitive. One thing that we want to, and what I want to shy away from again, sometimes we connect intuitive to psychic and maybe that's a good topic for a different podcast, but psychic is a little bit different than intuitive. Now a psychic will utilize intuitive powers in order to tap into channeled messages, resources, connect to the other side. However, utilizing your intuition doesn't always mean that now you're going to, and I think sometimes people get wary of that. They're like, wait, am I going to be like seeing ghosts now? Am I going to be a channel? Am I a medium? And it's like, yes and no, that could happen. But for many of us, it doesn't, you know, uh, having access to our intuition does mean we're a medium per se, but that mediumship is leaning into your inner truth leaning into your soul, leaning into your higher self. And what your intuition does with that could lead to stronger uh, abilities. But I feel like that's only reserved for people that are really meant to be doing that and really want it. And when it comes to being a psychic, what I will say is be careful what you wish for, because it's a very interesting journey to go down. And, And I say that as someone that is kind of a closeted psychic, if you will. I mean, I think if you listen to me, you kind of know I probably have some psychic gifts, which I do but I don't like to put them on the forefront because I almost like my psychic gifts to be a surprise uh, when people are working with me. I don't like there to be an expectation that like, Hey, your grandfather's going to come through if we meet. He might, but he might not. And I just, mm, I don't want that responsibility. And also the kind of individuals I work with, uh, I don't once again, want that to be at the forefront. That's like a bonus, right? It's a bonus and it's part of the framework of me working with you, but it's not the leading force. And it's important that in my messaging, I don't lead with that so that I'm really intentional about who I'm calling in and who I'm working with. All right. So let's go back to this idea of intuition. So now we know we all have it. Some of us may notice it more so than others. Some of us are working on it. Some of us may feel really new to it all and don't even know what intuition is. A lot of times we think our intuition is our mind, which it's not. You know, I like to think your intuition lives wherever you point. I had the opportunity to see Wayne Dyer about a year before he passed, I want to say. You know, maybe it was a couple of years prior to that. Uh, but I got to see him in person and it was such a gift, such a beautiful opportunity. If you don't know who Wayne Dyer is, he is a spiritual teacher that passed away uh, a few years back. I want to say it was in the summer of either 2018 or 2019 and uh, just had really, really beautiful perspectives on life and how to show up from your heart. And one of the things that he said in this talk was close your eyes 
Now point to yourself. And I realized when I pointed to myself, I didn't point to my brain. I didn't point to my face. I didn't even point to my throat. I pointed to my heart. And I realized that's not only me, that's my truth. And that's where my intuition lives. Because my intuition is going to be the brain of my soul. The brain that's in my head, the brain that does analytics, the brain that is logical, the brain that is tied to the ego, that's not my soul brain. That's my human brain. That is the mind that I came here with to do human functions. And it's also the brain that often likes to team up and pair with the ego. I'm talking about the soul brain. And the soul brain is the intuition that lives in my heart. For many of you, it also might live in your gut. I find that it dances between the two, my gut and my heart. And so for me, that's my intuitive mind. That's my intuitive wisdom. Okay, You can call it your soul. I like to kind of call it the soul mind. Because the soul is your essence. It's unbreakable, unshakable, infinite. Your essence is eternal. It always was and it always will be. It is everything and it is nothing. It is complete and it is incomplete. It's a really cool duality of black and white, if you will, yin and yang. You know, it's all or nothing. So within that space, there is this intuitive mind and this intuitive mind operates off of soul conditions, okay? And when we say soul conditions, we mean the soul contract, we mean, you know, the soul evolution, we mean what we're here to learn, we mean erasing karma, we mean living out our purpose, we mean finding love, we mean knowing what home means, all of that, okay? And the soul and the intuitive mind are fueled by love, by compassion, by patience, grace, and a willingness to do our best to make this work. You know, and this, it, the soul doesn't have all the answers per se, because that's not the point. The point is, is about utilizing this time on earth to the best of your abilities. And likely the questions that you have, the things that you want to do, opportunities that you're curious about are funded by the soul, you know? And it's like, I like to say, while we might not have all the answers, if we have the question, eventually we will get to the answers, but we have to be willing to be on the journey to go from point A, the question, to point B or C or D to the answer. And a lot of times we become impatient because the egoic mind steps in and says, hey, you asked a question and, and we're not finding an answer here. Whereas the soul and the intuitive mind operate off of this timeless platform where they're like, hey, it's going to come around. The answer already exists. If you already have the understanding and the capacity to curate the question, then you have the ability and the know-how and the trust but the answer is already a part of that. If you have the ability to ask a question, then there's a beautiful divine understanding that the answer exists. And we have to remove our attachment into the how and into the timing of that and just be in the why. The why is what will keep you showing up for this question until all of a sudden the answer will appear. So our intuitive mind is not often taught to be utilized growing up. It is a little bit from the space of, you know, if you were brought to church or prayer or taught to meditate, you know, it's not to say that um, intuition couldn't be found in, in places where maybe looking back, you're like, ooh, like I did grow up in the church and there were a lot of rules and that seemed to, you know, dim my intuition. But then at the same time, maybe there was feelings or sensations of sitting in church and feeling a connection to something greater or feeling a connection to yourself, right? Or being in prayer, or maybe you had parents that taught you how to meditate, or maybe, you know, growing up when you would play in nature, that was an opportunity to connect, right? So even though, you know, we don't want to point the finger completely at our parents, we don't want to point the finger completely at society, right? This is just the construct of earth. You know, it's the earth that we signed up for. And 
it's the earth that your parents signed up for and society signed up for. And somehow we created this outer world that we're learning how to dance in and out of. And so, you know, I don't want to blame or point the finger at anyone or anything, but Hey, you know, the reality is I didn't take intuitive one-on-one in college. I wasn't given, you know, tools to utilize my discernment growing up. I wasn't given an opportunity to really stretch and listen and be patient with things that felt good to me, things I wanted to try out. If anything, there were so many times where I would say things like, oh, I want to do this when I grow up, and I would get a reason why it wouldn't work. So those reasons then became opportunities for me not to strengthen my intuition. Because my intuition was saying, hey, Danielle, uh, maybe you should be a talk show host one day. And I'm like, ooh, that would be really fun. I would love to be a talk show host. Oh, my goodness, that would be fabulous. I love Hollywood I love celebrities. I love playing dress up. I love drama and the arts. I love writing. This makes so much sense. And of course, like when I thought of it, I wasn't thinking about how. I was just like, this is what I want. This feels meaningful. This is why. And then when I delivered that to the outside world, I was given reasons why that was wrong. And so then, you know, strike out for the ego or for the intuition, right? Intuition was like, oh no, Danielle, that was a, that was just a fantasy. And for many of us, we start to believe that our intuition is more of a fantasy. Is oh, it's just our imagination. But I like to believe that our imagination is actually the gateway to our intuition. You know, so often I work with clients, especially when I'm doing past life regressions, uh, a lot of people get stuck because they think they're making up what's happening. And let me tell you, they are not making up what's happening because a lot of it I'm actually channeling with them. Uh, I'm writing down before they say it. And I've done fact check checks on things like they're not making this stuff up, but they're still a part of them because of what we've been told. They think, oh my gosh, this is just my imagination it's wrong. Whereas I'm like, yeah, it could feel like imagination. However, it's the gateway to your intuition. And so we have to be in a position now as we build and strengthen our intuition to not only listen to our own intuitive hits for ourselves, And remember that intuitive hips are timeless a lot of the time. Sometimes they're not, you know, uh, sometimes an intuitive hit could, could be urgent, like, Hey, like go check in, on your child, right? That's like that mother's intuition or, you know, it don't, don't go that route. And then you find out there's an accident, right? So there's, there's those very like quick hits of intuition, but then when it comes to like deeper things, right? Uh, those can be more timeless and those can't be quantified by, uh, certain, you know, action items, so to speak, or, or timestamps, if you will. So, you know, because our, our intuition was often boxed as imagination, fantasy, impractical, impossible, we don't really get to exercise it. So then when our intuition does come up, it feels foreign, it feels strange, it feels silly. Uh, we don't know what to do with it. And so I want this opportunity here and now where we are to be an opportunity for you to say, I am willing to give more power to my intuition than my past. I'm going to understand that in order to be more of a value to the world and also feel more valuable in who I am, I'm going to deny what I thought I had to do, what I was told I should do. And here's the thing. I always say, like, don't just like ignore practicality and security and responsibility, right? Doesn't mean uproot your life and just dive deep into your intuition because that would be impractical too, because you set up, especially for many of us, we've set up a life and a foundation based on everything that we should do. And that has given us security. So then to counter that and jump into intuition that you haven't fully developed yet, that could be uh, limiting or foolish or harmful, right? So look at the life that you have and realize, okay, there's a lot of things I want to change, but I'm going to look at where I do have a foundation where it's secure and use that security as an investment in growing my intuition. And as I grow my intuition, intuition, as I develop it further, there will come a point where I can release more and more of these old things that I set up for my life that no longer serve me, that no longer feel relevant. You know, for many people that follow intuitive path, you may realize, oh, like I just noticed they, 
got out of that relationship. They no longer work at that job anymore. They moved to a new town. Uh, they dress different. Okay. A lot of that is because we are shifting out of past patterns and we are moving into intuitive ones. And our intuition is creating a framework for us to feel more aligned to other things, other people, other places to live, new ways to express ourselves. And it will constantly shift and flow. I mean, I find that so often in my own life, right? The, you know, one thing about landing deeper in your intuition, following that as your path forward, doesn't mean you're just going to have the answer. You know, it doesn't mean that, okay, I got my purpose. This is it. Now nothing's going to change because now I know, you know, our, our purpose is also evolving. You know, one day our purpose is to show up and, and be a mom. And then what happens, you know, when you're an empty nester? Yeah, you're still a mom, but wait, wait, I thought that was your purpose. Now what? Hmm. You know, you're not going to be on top of your child, hopefully, once they leave the house, once they leave the nest. So what's your purpose today? And then, you know, that's when you're like, oh, actually, I've wanted to get deeper into gardening. Okay, great. That becomes your purpose. Or I want to go back to school. Great. Right? So our purpose is always, you know, flowing and evolving and shifting and changing and ebbing and flowing. And, and our intuition is never going to just land on the final solution. Uh, it's always just going to keep growing, shifting, shaking things up and uh, keeping us on our toes, so to speak. So getting into this notion of what my upbringing brought me looking at that, looking at the moments like me, I want to be a talk show host. No, Danielle, you're not that great at writing and you're going to have to probably be a journalism major and that's going to be too tough for you. Oh, got it. I can't do that. I want to, you know, be in the school play. Ooh, that conflicts with swimming. And it's a lot easier for you to do swimming because your siblings do that too. And you all go to practice at the same place. Got it. Can't be, you know, in, in the play. I can't act. All, all of this is just more and more evidence of me going against my intuition, even eating growing up. Danielle, you have to be on a diet. You have to do Weight Watchers. You can't eat this. All of that also did not give me access to my intuition. Okay. There are so many ways where our intuition was denied. Think about the things that you were told to do, not just academically, but physically, uh, how you dressed, your appearance, who you can hang out with, right? That was another one too. I want to be friends with this person. No, you can't be friends with that person. I don't like their mom. Oh, okay. There's something wrong with this kid because my mom doesn't like their mom. That denies your intuition. Okay. And look, it doesn't mean that following your intuition, you're going to get it right every time. Cause sometimes following your intuition is going to lead you to a lesson. Sometimes it's going to lead you to an opportunity to grow. There have been people I've dated that weren't technically meant to be my person forever, but they were meant to be my person to show me something so that I could evolve forward in a certain way when it comes to how I show up for myself and how I show up for partnership. So, you know, that's why we can't have any regrets about following our intuition because it doesn't always lead to the reward every time, but it always leads to some kind of return that will eventually lead us to the reward, right? So even if, you know, you're like, I intuitively knew I was supposed to date that person, or I intuitively knew I was supposed to be friends with that person, or I intuitively knew I was supposed to take that job. There was a reason, even if it quote unquote didn't work out, it did because it's working you into a deeper framework. You know, life is messy. It's all over the place. And so our intuition is trying to come in and clean up. And part of that cleanup may put you in situations where it might seem confusing. Like, why did I end up here? Well, you had to end up here because we had to erase something from your past. We had to undo and, and rework the wiring so that you can move forward and be more purposeful going forward so that we can get you in that right partnership, so that we can make you, you know, living uh, and, and showing up in this way so that you can get this job which wouldn't have been possible without the other one. Okay. So these are all things that we've, we've got to look at. Another thing that can deny our intuition is giving too much power to other people. Oftentimes when we've been denied our intuitive impulses or desires growing up, we become a people pleaser because we're being told all no all the time. If we're being told no all the time, then we have to figure out a way to be told yes, because being told no doesn't feel good. It hurts our heart. It's disappointing, doesn't make us feel loved. So we say, okay, following my intuition doesn't get me what I want because people keep saying no. 
So if I deny my intuition and I just say, okay, yes, and become a people pleaser, then I'll get love, right? And we think we will, but then one day we wake up and we're like, ooh, I don't know if that really was the right strategy. And that's why a lot of times uh, being a people pleaser also hurts us in following our intuition. A lot of times we get caught up in certain relationship dynamics, whether it's with our coworkers, friends, or romantic relationships where we are attached to them and we're waiting on them. We're looking to them to give us answers and make decisions for us, which is a side effect of being a people pleaser and a side effect of never having a chance to follow your intuition. Because when you weren't able to follow that guidance growing up, you were told you're not good at decision making. You don't make good decisions. And so if you find yourself off in a position where you're second guessing yourself, where you're confused, where you're hoping other people will decide for you, it's likely because you don't have that intuitive confidence. And so one of the ways that we can grow that is remove people from our life that always are making us wait, that we're always tending to, that we're always hoping will give us what we need, uh, that are simply unavailable. You know, if people are hot and cold with you, that's, that's not going to help your intuition. It's going to confuse it and hijack it. It's going to ruin your confidence. It's going to ruin your ability to learn how to use your discernment and make more choices going forward. So that's something that we want to look at too. And then eventually there gets to be a point where we just have to trust that what it is that we're made of, that who we are is possible in this life and that we're meant to be here and all of that is a value, that becomes really powerful. And it's really awkward and comfortable at first to be in that kind of power, to be in that knowing because a lot of it is going to seem unknown to the ego, to the analytical mind. So we're like, whoa, whoa, wait, what? How are we going to quantify this? Uh, I don't understand how we get results here. But you can. You can treat your intuitive desires as a goal to work towards. I mean, that's what I do as a coach and an intuitive and an astrologer. I take what people want and from their intuition Together, we brainstorm and we work out solutions so that what it is they're feeling deep down can manifest as an outer reality. You know, most people that come to me, they say they're confused. They don't know what their purpose is. They want more meaning in their life, but they know what they want. And my job is to just pull it out of them. And then once it's pulled out there and it's living and it's, you know, something that we're now both aware of, now let's make a plan. Let's get this out in the world. Let me know. Let me let you know that I believe in you and I believe in this, that I believe that it's possible, that I believe that the things that we desire, that we think about are meant to be, you know, God isn't just holding this shiny dangling carrot in front of you constantly that you have to chase and run after. It's not how this life works. That's how other people have made this life work out for their own benefit. But you, my darling, you deep down, you know what you're capable of. And do you have the power to make that happen? And it's going to take trust in yourself. It's going to take having to make decisions. It's going to take weeding out parts of your past or people that currently represent your past and shifting them out of your life. If you want to be in a spiritual practice, you can't be in one if you're a people pleaser. The universe isn't looking for people pleasers to give what they want. It's looking for those that are here to please themselves and make themselves a priority because, and and doing it from a good place, not an impulsive, scared, give this to me place, yet a place of sovereignty a place of discernment, a place of, I recognize what isn't working for me. I recognize what is unhealthy for me. I recognize what is bad for me. I recognize what is creating havoc in my life over and over again. 
I recognize where I keep bringing up certain things with my therapist every single week. And there comes a point where you got to pull the plug on those things. And in pulling the plug on those things, you are plugging into your own resource now, your own truth. And that's what the universe respects. Okay. And, and, and I say this not to look at the universe as like picking and choosing. The universe is just a mirror, right? So if you're a people pleaser, the universe is going to be like, I can't, you know, all right, you're giving me people pleaser energy. Like I'm just going to kind of shy away here. But then if you're respecting yourself, then it's a lot easier for the universe to just show up and give you what you need. It's a lot less confusing. You know, when we're running around and we're manic and we're impulsive and we're flailing about and we're having these temper tantrums, we just want to manifest already. It's really confusing for the universe. It's a lot of work. It, it, it's not very clear cut. But when we are standing tall and standing proud, even if we're a little scared, it's okay because we're making choices. That's the biggest thing that the, the universal energy responds well to is you making a choice, choice that I'm going to do better. And so I'm going to walk away from this. I want more. So I'm going to do this. I know that I'm meant to be a good writer. So I'm going to enroll in some classes. I know that I'm better than this dynamic romantically. And so I'm going to break up with them or I'm going to have a hard conversation that I've been avoiding because I'm scared of what they're going to say or what they'll think of me. I care more about what I think of myself. And that's how we start to move through our life in a way where it feels like we're getting a return where things are clicking. That's how we move through our life where we feel like we are a value. This is where we co-create from. This is where we have the authority to access our natural resources from within to gather information and make decisions. And it's okay to ask for space in those moments as well. You know, a lot of times when we give something a little space, especially for me, if it's a, if it's a dynamic where I might feel like a little triggered, okay, especially like romantic relationships, I get very triggered there. I try not to be reactive in those moments because I find that in being reactive, I'm just operating from my past. I'm trying to manipulate from a space that I thought would work when I was younger. And so I have to give myself a little space and time before I react so that I can edge that out and then lean into my intuition. And then from my intuition, I can pull from there and say, okay, how do we respond? And that's a way we build that muscle as well. And that's a way we create more satisfaction in responding from that place. It's still scary. It's still vulnerable, but at least it's your truth. And you can look back and say, I don't regret how I responded because I responded from my power. I responded from my truth. And from there, no matter what, you know, you're creating a ripple effect. You know, you're creating a currency that's going to lead you further ahead. Again, it just comes down to making choices. When we're not in our intuition, trying to make choices can be hard. And we want to, you know, seek advice from individuals that are able to hold space for you, are able to ask questions to help you, are able to be in a space where they support your higher goals and reasons for being here that want you to unlock your discernment as opposed to people that are just as, you know, reckless and confused as you are getting advice from those people. It does not work. I've, I've tried that too. Oof. It's worse when you do that. Has anyone been in that situation where like you're in like a frantic, wounded, triggered space and you don't know what to do and you're definitely operating off your ego and you're definitely in a place where, you know, you're being triggered by circumstances that mirror your past. And then you ask somebody who's equally in that place and you follow their advice and then it backfires even more. Oof. And then what do you do? You regret that you ask that you asked, right? And you regret that you asked because again, it's nothing personal against that other person. You regret you asked because you didn't create that space to lean into your own self or seek proper support to help you navigate through that situation. So again, when it comes to our personal power, when it comes to confidence, when it comes to being decisive, 
it comes from us deciding that I am no longer going to be fueled by the circumstances of my past that didn't allow me to flourish and truly explore who I am. And instead, I'm going to give myself that opportunity here and now, recognizing this is a fresh start. This is a new day, a new hour, a new minute where I can start to explore what my intuition is. And I think the best next step is, is to find what that lives inside of you. You know, we all have that intuitive voice. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. And then point to yourself. And wherever it is that you point is very likely your access point to where that intuitive voice lives. And so connect to it. Talk to it. Say, I see you. I can feel you in my body. And I want to hear you. And sometimes hearing our intuitive voice isn't literal. It's not just like, typed out or spoken back to us. It could be a feeling. It could be a sensation. It's not always literal. It could just be a little ping. It could come to us later when we're, you know, washing the dishes or on a walk on a path in nature. And this is all part of your research, learning how to connect with that voice and then trial and error. You know, what happens when I listen to that voice? What happens when I don't? You know, but the biggest takeaway that I hope you have from this is realizing that the times that we're in moving deeper into the Aquarian age, moving deeper into these spiritual concepts aren't meant to be some sort of like crack or candy to just instantly get what you want, but an opportunity to know who you are and get what you want from that space because it is coming from integrity, decisiveness, and a willingness to believe in yourself and a willingness to just be in the question with the knowing and the understanding that the answer will arrive. All right. If this resonated with you, please let me know. I love when you repost or message me. Sometimes I get overwhelmed by um, messages and typing back. It's not always, uh, my, my best way of communication. Just know if you ever reach out and I don't write back, please know I see it. I receive it. I just might be a little overwhelmed in that moment. Sometimes I might send you an audio back because that feels easier. Uh, it just works better for me, but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it. So I just, I just want to put that out there, uh, as well. And, uh, repost, share, referral, all those things are really yummy and beautiful. And I freaking love you. Hey, let's take a moment to talk about your sex life. Here's the thing. Sex should only be hard in one way. After that, I believe it should be easy, natural, fun, and light. And the products that you use, they should be that way too. That's why I was so ecstatic when Woo More Play, the makers of organic personal lubricants, reached out to me. I knew I had to sync up with them. And further, I knew I had to sync up with one of my favorite dudes to see how it was all going to play out. The problem with regular lube, and me personally, I, I don't need it to get wet, but I'm always up for an accessory. Uh, it just, it's watery, it's kind of slimy, and it kind of feels like it's not supposed to be there. It's awkward. But with Woo More Play, it comes out of the bottle. You warm it up in your hands. It's soft. It's subtle. There's a little bit of grittiness and it glides so seamlessly over your lover's body. There's a subtle scent and taste like sweet vanilla and it truly heightens the entire experience. My body was more sensitive. I was literally buzzing. We went for so much longer. I was exploding, seeing stars. Everything was heightened because of Woo More Play. It is literally an extension of the sex that you crave, and it amplifies the pleasure that you know you're meant to have. So if you're feeling like you should be coming more in your life, I believe that you should, and you should come over to WooMorePlay.com and get their coconut love oil because you deserve to have really good sex. And rumor has it, every time you buy a bottle of Woo More Play, a virgin pops her cherry.